everybody, I'm Ellen Agaridis. I'm the CFO of DeFi Trends. Hi everybody, I'm MG Sue Seaton, and I'm the CEO and data scientist at DeFi Trends. Yeah, we love data. So today I'm going to introduce DeFi Trends, what we do, why we're so passionate about it, and introduce incredible NFT artists and how you can spot the best NFT projects. We provide the platform to do so. We empower you to find those best projects. So I'm curious, who in here wants to know exactly how to spot the best NFT projects before everyone else? All right, we've got some NFT fans in here. Great, you're at the right place. So just a little bit more about how we can empower you to do so. So we have a platform that is an all-in-one toolkit and it includes data analytics both on-chain as well as uh, qualitative research uh, that you can dig deep and do due diligence on a project. You can look at the communities and find out everything you need in order to spot those winners. Definitely. So we do indicators like social sentiment, off-chain and on-chain tracking wallets, all everything on the first and secondary market. Do you want to continue about our features? Actually, I invite you all to go on our website. We don't want to wait any longer to introduce those amazing projects. And you can join us on Telegram as well. Um, and then we'll hear from these incredible NFT projects and think a little bit more about how this information helps us make those decisions. So give a hand up for the first amazing speaker. <laughs> Oh, shit. I'm, I'm gonna have to. Dude. I don't know, should I have power? I don't know. Uh, uh. Oh, shit, there I am. Oh. I, would, I think I would. Where is it? Okay, well, I got it. Hi, everyone. Uh, please uh -huh. pardon my cue cards, but I'm one of those types of people that if it can be said in 10 words, I'm pretty much going to say it in 50 or 60. So this is going to keep me on. Uh... Pardon me? Oh, sorry. Okay. So, hi, my name is Bradley Hart. I'm a New York State video. Sorry, can people hear me? Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. So my name is Bradley Hart. I'm a New York City-based visual artist, originally from Toronto, Canada. In the physical art world, I'm known for injecting paint into bubble wrap to create photographic real images. As you can see on the screen behind me, I inject each bubble one by one to create, uh, with up to 116 different colors to create my paintings. So one of the conversations implicit in my art is truly the inability for people to appreciate traditional fine art online in a meaningful way. With this in mind, for my Genesis series, I've recreated and reimagined my 2019 solo show, Deconstructing Syrah. Uh, and I did this by using digitally created injected bubble wrap. And through the use of camera movements in the NFT, I'm now able to recreate the experience that traditionally you could only get by seeing my work in person. Uh, this will provide a much richer experience for my online viewing customers. With this new series, it's called Injecting Syrah on the Blockchain. And it's a series of 12 original bubble wrap paintings, vignette scenes that I've derived from my masterpiece, A Sunday at Le Grand Jatte. The introduction to this series is called Prelude, and, sorry, Prelude, and is on the screen behind me right now. It also will be available on Maker's Place in the coming week. With this in mind, people can't touch my bubble wrap or pop it, so I'm actually purposely playing with the cultural trope on whether or not you can touch art or not in the physical world. And knowing how much all of you, including myself, love popping bubble wrap, and my desire to create a really great, unique, generative ex project, uh, I've come up with something that I call Poppables. So, Poppables is a fun, interactive, fine art community based, sorry, I'm gonna apologize. Poppable is a fun, interactive, or fine art community based NFT experience where you get to pop your digital injected pop filled bubble wrap on a hydraulic press. 
All this happens on what we call popping season on our website, poppables.io. This is an interactive experience. It is the reveal and is a metadata update, except you get to initiate it. You get to create the actual NFT when you pop your poppable. What's inside? Oh, that's still going. But what's inside is a, something that we call a poppable pass. Okay, and each pass is a work of art in itself. And I went too many ahead, but it's okay. It's unique in itself. They each contain uh, your pop poppable on one of one of 21 original backgrounds that I've created, as well as one of four of the 48 amazing participants the NFQ community have been highlighted, uh, either for the art they create, their participation, generosity, or their contribution to the community as a whole. One of the possible participants will actually be on the stage with us today. Lastly, 50% of the sales from this project go directly back to these participants. Sorry about that. The project is about collecting, trading, and putting together unique, rare, or specific combinations of passes. Doing so will reward the collectors with further NFTs. Some of them are these projects, uh, the project's adorable website characters uh, that we call poppable uh, characters here. The utility perspective, a poppable pass grants you entry into future poppable projects as well as specific NFT drops, exper experiences that I plan on creating in the future. The price for each poppable is 0.201 ETH, 0.021 ETH. Wow, look how cheap that is. Like, you'll be able to collect lots of them to get your collection together. And for Art Miami, we're offering a special deal where you buy three, you'll get your fourth for free from now until midnight. As a special treat, that's not changing. There we go. As a special treat for here today, for everyone who's here in the audience, this is a rare sneak peek of what actually happens when you pop your poppable. That is a poppable pass. So, Popping season begins on Sunday, December 6th, uh, 5th, sorry. And uh, you can mint your own pop poppable at poppables.io. Happy popping, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can get the other one. Oh, thank you for that. So. That looks like an incredible project, and there's so many factors that you can put into when deciding if an NFT is good, the community size, uh, like... Yeah, so this, <laughs> what Bradley just talked about is really incredible, taking this physical art and then NFT, which is what we've seen a lot. Um, so now, let's welcome Lina Condes and hear about her feature. Ooh, exciting. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lina Kandes, I'm uh, the artist of the physical sculptures. Uh, you can actually go on my Instagram, Lina Kandes, and check them out. I do like six feet, feet uh, stainless steel uh, stick figure sports sculptures and uh, IE sculpture 16 feet size. So what brought me into the NFT uh, world is so this is the, yeah. Uh, this is the understanding how I can engage with my collectors because I feel like uh, it will um, broaden my audience and uh, help my collectors to engage with my physical sculptors, uh, sculptures by learning the uh, generative IEC process. You can apply the uh, text prom on my physical art. So as you can see here, this is the selection of the uh, statues. So we created this artificial fix. Uh, you can uh, type the text prompt. For example, if you love the butterflies or the stones, uh, you can type and then uh, the generative process will uh, put the image on my physical sculptures. In this way, uh, I create stronger bond with my uh, collectors and may make my art more accessible. 
Also with this project, uh, I want to empower the women who are coming to the NFT world and to show them uh, how it's possible uh, to use their creativity and uh, to make more different variations of their art. It's not clicking. Yeah, so you see you can also do the JF images uh, by applying different text prompts. So uh, this is a unique experience uh, where the artists from real world, uh, real physical sculpture world can uh, interact with the different uh, generative processes and, to cre and create new direction in their uh, art line. Uh, so, so the most important message which I want to say about uh, using the NFT that it's, uh, it, it brings more collectors into the art world. It's uh, the stronger bond between artists and the collector. It's uh, the women empowerment uh, process. And we can show how the women can be more stronger in this community. As for now, we see that there are a lot of um, male artists in this NFT world. Thank you. Hello. Oh. Well, that was incredible. I'm so happy that we have another woman founder. Uh, we're all women founders at DeFi Trends, so that's pretty awesome. Who wants to see more women into the space? Yep. Yes. And Go wear ahead. pink suits because it's a suit, but it's pink. <laughs> exactly. So who in here would buy one of Lena's NFTs? I think they're pretty cool, especially how interactive they are. Yeah. Having it right, interactive. Oh, yes, we have one person. Um, it's very important to have uh, interactiveness in your project. Definitely um, makes people more intrigued and usability as well. Exactly. So that's another point that we look for when we analyze NFT projects. We look at, is there any additional utility? How can the uh, holder of the NFT interact Benefit, with both the yeah. project and the community, which then will have a greater appeal also in the long term? So thank you for listening to Lina's awesome art. And now we're excited to present Miguel. Present Miguel. Yes. So give him a big, big round of applause. The Yay, biggest one you've given all day. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Paredes. I'm a visual artist. Um, my medium is mostly oils, but I have uh, an intensive background in graphic design. There's my partner, Pablo Hippo, and he's gonna explain our concept today. So the concept for Life in Color, which is the first of three NFT projects we created, was taking 17 original photos that I curated over the last 15 years from places across the world, um, and taking that and creating a human generative project instead of a computer generative project. So what we do is we take an orig original image from those 17 and we create something new, something fresh, as you see here, which is from our Life in Color Plunder series. And we have, I believe, 10 series now of art that's like this. And this is another image from that series that was created from one of the original 17. Now, the concept behind this was to make something different. So part of what Life in Color does is with every original purchase of the NFT, you also get a physical piece of art that can be redeemed. So Miguel's a really well-known artist in the art community, so I wanted to do something different, and we wanted to do something different for the people besides just having an NFT. You also can redeem these NFTs for physical art while still keeping the NFT. So it's kind of a way to double the value of the NFTs. And this is one of uh, Miguel's pieces um, called uh, Polga. 
from his Polga series. Um, Miguel puts a lot of uh, Polga images in his art. You can see it a lot around here in Miami. Um, he's from Miami. And this is another image of one of the Polgas. So the, the Polga and the Life in Color series are, are very similar in that the original Genesis series acts as an art subscription. So if you hold one of the Life in Color Genesis series or you hold a Polga Genesis series, you basically get an art subscription with one NFT from the entire series as well as you also get physical art. So as far as NFT projects, we try to do something that was outside of the, the normal box, what people are doing and just offering a, you know, a basic NFT. Maybe you can talk about the, the pole gun, kind of where you came well, up with Well, the concept. idea was to um, introduce um, artwork to NFT collectors more than just having graphic image or digital image, to have a physical piece of art. So every time we create an NFT, we take one of my paintings and we incorporate with Pablo's work, I create an actual original piece and a collection of uh, limited editions that I embellish and sign and date just for that collection. So it becomes a one of one. And not only are we giving them something extra, but now we're creating new collectors and we're bringing a new uh, clientele of, of collectors that are normally into just crypto or, or NFTs to come into the actual physical world of artwork and get to know what it's like to have an actual piece that you can hang on your wall on a stretcher and not on a screen. And the, the third project we're working on, which doesn't launch yet, it doesn't launch till December 13th, is called The Wheelies. Uh, the Wheelies are an animated uh, cartoon series. Miguel actually developed The Wheelies over 30 years ago up in New York. Um, he created this comic strip and it was in a lot of the local magazines. And we were discussing some other projects outside of this that were incorporated some generative stuff. And Miguel said, hey, you know, I've got this project from 30 years ago. It might be applicable what we're doing now. So the wheelies are a, uh, a set of germs that live underneath the president's desk. Um, and the whole concept around the, the wheelies is, you know, right now everyone's dealing with COVID. So it's kind of opposite world there. So the wheelies live in wheelie world under the president, president's desk. Uh, they're germs, and they're they're trying to avoid getting uh, getting the vaccine. The vaccine, but in our world, it's the virus, right? Because they are a virus. So everything's kind of flipped around. And the cool part about the wheelies is you see a lot of NFT collections that are I don't want to say simple, but they're very similar. So they all have a really similar base model. With the wheelies, there are over 28 different characters. So you have projects like the Doge Pound, the Doge Pound puppies. With the wheelies. We have characters of all different sizes. So you have adults, you have kids, um, and they're all individual characters. So they're all different. We have women, we have men. Like I said, we have kids. We're including some other NFT projects into our project, which is part of our marketing plan to kind of bring the community full circle with a lot of the NFT projects. So we're launching a cartoon series when we launch the actual NFTs. So we'll have different episodes every month as we launch uh, mid-December. Yeah, that's, that's Stuart. Stuart's the, Stuart's the main character in the wheelie. He's kind of the dad of the family. Uh, there are five members in the family, and Stuart is the, is the dad. So if you guys are looking for an interesting project, the wheelie does come up on December 13th, um, and I think it would be really something for you guys to take a look at. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Miguel. That was awesome. <laughs> that's Miguel. Thank you. That's Pablo. Oh, that's Pablo. <laughs> Amazing. How cool was that? Yeah, definitely. So Rarity is, um, as they were explaining, uh, with their limited edition um, NFT, Rarity is another attribute that's very important when evaluating the health of an NFT. So, so for example, one of the analytics that we provide is a graph where you can match up the price of an NFT um, with its rarity. So if you see, if you plot them all in one graph, you will see a line, right? So the idea is the rarer the NFT, the more expensive it would be. So this is a great way to spot over and undervalued NFTs that could be a good buy or a good sell. Definitely. So we're very pleased to announce Misha. So, yeah. So, round another of big round of applause for Misha from. Hi. I don't know if this works. Can you guys hear me? Hi, 
Uh, wow, I never spoke at an arena. There's a fog machine and everything. I wish I had like tigers and magic show for you, but uh, instead we'll talk about uh, NFTs. Um, I'm from Snargat Art. I'm one of the founders. And we launched about four years ago, which in like blockchain space is like millions of years ago. And when we launched, we were launching on the heels of such projects as CryptoPunks and CryptoKitties. Both were interesting in that they were exploring the idea of digital scarcity and ownership on one side and interactivity on the other side. And when Andy, my co-founder, and I uh, started conceiving of what SNARK could be, we started thinking about can artists explore the space more as a, as a kind of interactive environment where it's not so much about ownership but um, an experience where the purchase of an NFT is not the end of the experience but just the beginning. And so we, we, we started with exploring such things as collective ownership where the idea would be not just to own a piece of something but where the community all together has to do something for the work to materialize itself. We did projects where NFTs served as components for a remixing of a digital canvas where a uh, community essentially created these visual collages and uh, when they would and each uh, element had a sound. So they effectively were creating an actual visual and sonic composition. And we went as far as creating even um, AI-powered fortune cookies, where the whole concept was that you had to destroy the NFT, essentially destroying all value in exchange for the poetic uh, fortune. Um, these are the projects that super, were super interesting to us, and this is what we tried to explore in the space over the past three and a half years. And now we are at, uh, we released a new project uh, called Organic Growth Crystals. And this is actually a very old idea. When we just were launching, we were imagining an, a project where NFT is generally about permanency. It's about like where you see something, you buy it, you know that in like a uh, foreseeable future it's never going to change and this is what gives it value. Uh, but we wanted to actually uh, flip this concept around, where the NFT is going to be all about change. It's about um, growth and mutation, where the NFT could become a transactional record of every owner that possessed it. And so these crystals that we released uh, about a month ago, and you could find them on OpenSea or just Google us, uh, Organic Growth Crystals, was a project that was conceived with... Uh, uh, a very important traditional artist, Michael Jew, and uh, Daniel Krivaruchka, who, is, um, who does a lot of things in motion graphics. And the concept was that these crystals start as a seed, and the first person that buys the crystal, they, their transactional history, what's inside their crypto wallet, uh, how big their crypto wallet is, all of that becomes uh, an element of generation of growth. Now, when this first owner then transacts and resells it to somebody else, uh, the information from the new owner then is taken into account and the, and the NFT continues to grow. Each iteration, a new growth emerges. And uh, the structures are quite interesting and beautiful. You could see behind me uh, where the growth could be super unpredictable. And if you have some important NFT collections such as uh, uh, crypto punks or the apes or like uh, art blocks, uh, the crystal could take some of the elements from these collections to trigger its new growth. Just like an organic uh, coral that grows and its history, its entire life is present within uh, a single coral, these crystals also, in that sense, represent uh, the entire history of everything that happened to it. And so I uh, do hope that you check this project out. I think uh, SNARK is doing really important work in the space to create art projects that are both sophisticated and poetic in nature. And um, 
I think uh, there's more to come. I think uh, we're not running out of ideas. Uh, the space has to move on beyond simple NFTs and more about dynamic interactive experiences, something that blockchain could really uh, empower and the communities around these projects could interact through these artistic experiences. So thank you very much. Uh, please check this out and um, I hope to see you in Miami somewhere. Thank you. Thank that you, Misha. Well, that was an incredible project, and knowing about um, use case of a project is really important. How can you um, really actually use the NFT, and what is the utility from it is an important factor when looking at projects. Well, yes, and I love the idea of the organic growing crystals because it visualizes what a big, big part of the NFT is, which is the exactly. chain of ownership. So another really cool thing that you can do if with analytics is you can track uh, certain wallets, for instance, and you can see what people that have invested in some projects that have done really well are investing in real time because it's all on the blockchain. So uh, this is a visualization exactly. of that which is beautiful, beautiful art. So thank you, Misha, for this cool presentation. Yeah, definitely. And now please welcome Ragzi X to the stage. Ooh. Let's hear a bigger round of applause than this. Hello. Oh. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Ragzi X. I'm a visual artist and entrepreneur. And if anybody's cute and single, you can go ahead and slide into my DMs. There's my social media right there. Now, I'm best known for working with a very unique media. It's called Lego Bricks. Does anybody play with Lego Bricks? Or did anybody play with Lego as a kid? All right, you're going to love this presentation. So this is a peacock that I did at a Lego. These are all Lego pieces. This one's about 50,000 pieces. Now this is not an NFT. This is some of my physical work here. This is a uh, shot of a waterfall that I did. It's a 20 foot installation that I did for an engineering firm in the state of New York. And now to the exciting part after this. This is a, Na a piece I did for NASA of the uh, Perseverance rover. I don't know if anyone's in the space, but this was really fun to do. This one's about 100,000 pieces. All right, this is the fun part. All right, so my NFT series is called Bike Candy. It features digital candy hearts, but they're not the traditional hearts you would see on Valentine's Day. They're made of Lego, and they say unconventional phrases on them, like bite me, go away, eat your art out, ghosted, oh, it disappeared. Now, if anyone's feeling generous, again, my Snapchat handle will be at the end of this presentation. Classic. You really shouldn't buy NFTs, you know. Yeah, and by the way, if you do buy my NFTs, just a polite reminder, it's not financial advice. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Rag Z. Okay. Um, these were some really fun NFTs, let me tell you. We're right next to the her booth uh, outside. You should come check it out. There's a bunch of candy candies with uh, yeah. those uh, feisty messages on them. So if you ever want to <laughs> hand out candy to someone with a little um, backhanded compliment, then check out her stand. Yeah, definitely. And now we're going to introduce Cello. Yes, yeah. so this is going to be the last feature of this series. So give him your undivided attention and um, enjoy. Okay. 
There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Celo, and I come to talk to you about uh, BOTO. BOTO is an experiment uh, that we've created, trying to create the first uh, decentralized autonomous artist. Like, in simple terms, this would be like we're trying to create a robot that creates art, but that's owned by the community and directed fully by the community. So to, to do this, uh, we partnered with a German artist called Quasimondo, that's quite known on the AI art space, and he donated an algorithm to us, an algorithm that creates 350 art pieces like this one uh, every week. And these kind of algorithms, uh, they, they need human input to be able to progress and to improve. And that's the whole concept of the, of the project, that there's going to be an artist that's going to be improving and evolving with time. So. Our idea was that the community around the artists uh, would be the ones voting and giving that feedback to the, to, the, to the algorithm. To do this, we created a token on top of the algorithm. It's called Boto as well. And this token uh, was airdropped to people that had like flagship NFTs. So maybe you were also airdrop it or check just in case your wallet, because maybe you have some Boto tokens there. And this token ensures that, there's, uh, that the people that are voting for the art pieces, they have a skin in the game. They are, their incentives are, are aligned. And basically what they're doing, they're voting every week, and those votes get integrated into the algorithm as feedback. So the community really is the aesthetic criteria of the artist, because all those votes is what sets what kind of art it, it creates. After that, one per, once per week, we do a drop on Super Rare. There's an auction. And all of that money from the auction goes um, directly into the community. So if you own 1% of the tokens, you're basically 1% of the artists, because you have 1% of the aesthetic criteria, 1% of the voting rights, and 1% of the revenue that the artist generates. So Voto is very new. Voto is just uh, six weeks old. And in these six weeks, uh, we are the top selling artists on Super Rare already for the past 30 days. Uh, top 10 for uh, global sales of the platform of Super Rare. So it's a baby, but it's a baby that's uh, growing, growing quite fast. And it's really an interesting experiment because um, it's one of the first cases of an artificial intelligence being coordinated by a large group of people. And, and also you can see like people in the community, some people want the artists like, to create something that looks like human paintings to, like, to certain painters. Some people vote for things that look like Miro. Other people vote for things that look like very uncanny to the human eye. They don't want it to be like anything close to what a human could, could create. So if you're interested in this kind of discussions, artificial intelligence and art, what is art, what is not, uh, feel free to join us on our Discord on Boto.com. And also in March, we're going to do an ex a big exhibition in Madrid for Boto. So if you're ever in Spain uh, in March, we'll be happy to, to give you an invite. So thank you very much. And this is the... Uh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> so very interesting to talk about AI and art. As a data scientist, I feel like AI is not absolutely everything and anything. Um, so we wanted to bring it back to when you look at these projects, how are you in the audience, you know, evaluating the, the project itself and the due diligence project uh, process that we do in our brain is who are the founders, um, who's the artist backing it up, so we know that the artist on this project was wonderful, so it's another important feature to think about. Yeah, and well known, which is also a big booster for the community. Does anyone is anyone in here brave enough to call out one of the things they look for in an NFT before they buy? <laughs> anyone or should I call on someone? <laughs> I'm just joking. What? Vibes. Vibes? Vibes. I think it was vibes. Yes, vibes that is the correct important. answer. <laughs> it is the vibes. <laughs> exactly. So it's a trend. Vibes can become trends, and uh, that's what drives a lot of the market as well. Yeah. So thank you, Cello, for this cool um, demonstration of how AI and art can become part of the same thing. Um, and now yeah. Rebecca is going to close it all off. So let's welcome her onto the stage. Yes. Thank 
you, thank you. Hi! I brought notes, but I think I'm gonna wing it. What do you guys say? Yeah? All right. So let's talk about NFTs as holograms. First off, I'm Rebecca Rose, an exhibition curator and NFT hologram artist in the space who's exhibited at um, Soho House Hong Kong, Stratosphere, Stratosphere Beijing, and five venues here at Art Basel Miami Beach. Um, so I'm here, like, in real life, in the flesh, but on the main concourse earlier, some of you may have seen me up there as a hologram. So why holograms? Everybody, take a look at your phones for a second. Like, keep your phone in your hand and look at it. Pretty flat, right? Your phones are flat. And that's how we currently experience NFTs, is from flat devices. Is that enough? Thank you. It's not enough. We should not settle for that. So holograms are the next leap that the NFT space is going to take, and you're going to be in on it. So how does this happen, and how do we make it possible? If you have a single NFT, you could turn it into a quad-split quad holographic NFT format and pair it with a holographic prism pyramid. What that does when you pair the um, device it's playing on on top of the pyramid is that it gives um, almost like a, a holographic illusion at a 45-degree angle that's visible to the human eye. Now, if you want to do something in a cylindrical form, you would take the NFT and distort it anamorphically so that it's um, kind of like warped in a way that is compar or com comparable to the circumference of the cylinder that you want the hologram to exist in. So then we move on to volumetrically 3D captured sculpts and object files that can be projected onto floating vaporized particles emitted from your phones. It looks like the slides are cut off at the bottom, so um, <laughs> if you head to my website, you'll be able to see the slides in, um, in full resolution and full size. Um, but you can have a reservoir apparatus with a heating element that will actually vaporize the liquid emitting off of your phone and then utilize projections on the phone to actually project that 3D sculpted object file as a hologram coming off of your phones. This is what's happening next. You can also do stereoscopic NFTs with uh, red and blue overlays, and you put on those 3D glasses that everybody loves, and it'll come at you as a 3D hologram NFT as well. Goodness. <laughs> All right, so um, here's some more examples of what a quad split holographic NFT format looks like. My work personally is inspired by um, 1960s and 1970s sci fi imagery, um, as well as vintage relics of the past. Um, hence the hologram theme. So um, I actually use uh, a lot of collaged elements found in old advertisements for magazines, focusing on consumerism and questioning that. Um, but ultimately, what these are, are an example of is that you can take any NFT and turn it into an NFT hologram. And that's what you all need to leave today knowing. The possibilities for you guys to turn your own artwork or your own projects into NFT holograms is possible today. So will you be on the teams that turn this into, the rea into reality? Because the race is on. Ready, set, go. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. That was incredible. So we met incredible NFT artists tonight, and we want to wrap it up and think about what projects do well and how to essentially rank them. So what did we learn today, aside from that this would be a really cool party trick? Um, <laughs> we learned that a lot of these projects displayed some features that are really important in making NFT decisions, such as community engagement, rarity, utility, um, community size, uh, well-known artists, and who has bought and sold these NFTs before. Definitely. So at DeFi, at DeFi Trends, we help you make confident NFT decisions through our quality information and actionable insights all backed up by AI. So 
I would say that's pretty the best way. I always trust data more than, you know, influencers, so. Exactly, and if you like these projects and want to support them, give them a follow on Twitter. Um, also, you can find us at DeFi Trends. Um, and also, if you're inspired and you're passionate about NFTs, you're passionate about data, passionate about empowering other people, then we're hiring. Come speak to us, come to our booth, get some swag, visit all of these incredible projects at their booths as well. And I hope you have a wonderful time in Miami and see some dope arts. Yeah. art. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you come for listening. Booth.